I'm going to be making homemade pappardelle. How do you say it? Pappardelle? Pappardelle. Pappardelle? Pappardelle? My dad's gonna kill me if he sees this. Every viewer from Italy, I sincerely apologize. Hi guys, I'm Matt, a tasty producer, and since it's the holiday season, it means it's the perfect time of year to show loved ones that you care about them, which usually means gifts, but that can get pretty expensive. So today, I've been challenged to make a short rib date night dinner for my girlfriend for only $12. Fingers crossed, this is gonna be a bit of a stretch. No romantic dinner is complete without a show-stopping dessert, and Liz loves sweets. So I retooled the budget a little bit in order to make a cannoli-inspired crepe cake. I'm starting with my dry ingredients. So in a large bowl, I'm combining flour, and then just a little pinch of salt. And then get that all nice and combined. Now I'm moving on to my wet ingredients. In a bowl, I'm going to combine my eggs, and I'm just gonna give these a little whisk to break them up a bit. And then I'm adding my evaporated milk. And I'm using evaporated milk because in recipes like this, you don't need a lot, and it's less expensive than a half gallon of milk. And finally, add my water, and just give that all a good whisk until nice and combined. And now that that's set, I'm just gonna add my wet back to my flour and just whisk until all of that is nice and combined. I'm adding my butter, which is one of my pantry staples. Give that all a nice mix. I'm going to let my batter rest for about 30 minutes and then move on to the next step. While our crepe batter is resting, we're gonna use our downtime to make some chocolate garnishes for the top of our cake. I've taken some chocolate chips here and just melted them in the microwave and transferred them to a piping bag. And now I'm just going to pipe out some swirls. Admittedly, these do look a little rustic, but I'm not a chocolatier. Liz isn't dating me because I'm an artist, so I'm fine with how they are. We're just gonna pop them in the freezer. Let's get started on our crepes. My batter is ready to go and I have a pan preheated over medium heat. We're just gonna take a little bit of batter, about two ounces here, and then I'm going to take the pan and just rotate it out to the edges. Just so all of your crepes look uniform and when you stack your cake, everything looks perfect. And I've got some bubbles forming on the top, a nice crispy edge, which means it's time to flip. Get my spatula under there and look at that. Oh, that's perfect. I feel great right now. I haven't made a crepe in years. Sneak this guy off of here. Lay on the side to just cool, and I'm going to carry on with my other crepes. I think I have about 20 more to make. Just because you save a lot of money doesn't mean you save a lot of time. Now that's my last crepe. I have two bowls of whipped topping here, and I'm just going to add some chocolate that I put in the microwave for about 20 seconds. And now we're just going to gently fold it in so we don't knock all the air out of it and cause it to deflate. And I've been able to use the chocolate chips twice today, which means I get more bang for my buck. Oh, I love saving money. And you can see the color starting to change. My whip topping is all set, which means it's time to assemble. And I'm just going to take a little bit of my white whip topping and apply it to the bottom. This is just gonna act as a glue for my crepes to stick. First one down, beautiful. Take a little bit of the chocolate whip topping, dollop that on top and just spread it out nicely. You wanna get to the edges of it. We don't want any bit of crepe left uncovered. Take my second crepe, put it on top, take an equal amount of our white whipped topping and just spread it out. And we're just gonna repeat that until we've done it with all of our crepes. So this will be a minute. What's gonna happen is as we stack this, you're gonna see each of the individual layers. Here we go, our last one. This has been a climb. And now I'm just gonna take the last of my whipped topping and really pile it on there. This is going to be the crown to our crepe cake. And I know we called this a cannoli-inspired crepe cake, but we didn't have it in the budget for ricotta, so heavy emphasis on inspired. So in order to keep with the cannoli theme, I'm adding whipped topping to the top and then some chocolate chips. I'm just smoothing it out. Not too flat, you want some nice dimension on there. Really wanna make this nice and perfect because this is the part everyone's gonna be able to see. And that looks like a nice puffy cloud right there. And then I have some mini chocolate chips here, which I'm just going to sprinkle all over the top. And we've actually used our chocolate chips three times in this recipe, so we've really, really stretched our dollar here. And finally, it's time to top with our beautiful little chocolate garnishes. Look at that. That's cute. That doesn't look like it was made on a budget. It costs less than $5 and hopefully Liz likes it. So let's move on to our main course. So it's time for the main event. We're going to be making a short rib ragu with handmade pasta. Now I'm going to start with my ragu. We have short ribs here. Now short ribs are a notoriously expensive ingredient, but I recommend you go to the butcher counter at your local market. You don't have to buy the set amount in the prepackaged container, so you can pick and choose exactly what you want depending on your budget. First thing I'll do is season my short ribs, and it's really important to season now because you won't have another opportunity to season your short ribs after this. A Little bit of pepper. I'm gonna flip these over and repeat on the other side. And a good tip is to get boneless short ribs. When you buy it with the bone in, the bone counts towards the weight. You don't wanna pay for that. I'm just going to place them in my pan. 
And at this point, you may be tempted to touch them, to move them around, let them sit, really let them develop that color and that browning on the outside. Then you can go ahead and flip them. Oh yeah. Look at that, nice and browned and crispy. I'm just going to repeat that on all sides and then remove them from the pan. Beautiful, boom. Look at that. It's time to add our vegetables, so I'm adding onion, carrots, and finally, a little bit of garlic. And usually you would add celery to this. It wasn't in the budget, and personally, I'm not a huge fan of celery, so we're gonna stop there. And just stir that, get it all nice and coated in our fat and oil, season with a little salt, and we're just gonna let all this go until nice and softened. We're going to add balsamic vinegar. Now this is to deglaze our pan to get all those brown bits off the bottom. Usually you use something like wine, but it wasn't really in the budget for us. This is a great alternative. It's time to add our beef stock. And then our tomatoes. Nice stir, make sure everyone has gotten to know each other. Add back our short rib. So we're going to let this come to a boil, then we're going to cover and simmer for two hours. And now for my favorite part, we're gonna get started on our pasta. I am the most excited for this step because I get to make pasta from scratch. Now, dried pasta is usually pretty cheap at the store, like a buck a box. Handmade pasta tends to be a bit more expensive, so I'm going to make it myself and save a little bit of money. So today, I'm going to be making fresh pappardelle. To get started, we're going to take our flour and just pour it on our work surface. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of salt and add it to the top. Now it's time to make a well in our flour, and I actually like using a measuring cup. I have three egg yolks in a bowl here, to which I'm going to add one whole egg and a little bit of olive oil. And just give that a good little whisk. Make sure all of your yolk and white are nice and combined. Now we can add our egg mixture to our flour. And at this point, I'm going to take my fork and slowly start incorporating the flour and the egg. And take your time. You don't want any leaks to happen. You want to gradually mix everything together. I've been doing this since I was a kid. My dad has been making pasta with me since I was little. It was kind of a rite of passage in my house. And we're just mixing these together gradually so the flour incorporates evenly and so we don't end up with a lumpy dough. We're just gonna take our scraper and start incorporating everything together. And now I'm just gonna take my hands and slowly start working this together. And this is where the muscle really starts coming in. At this point, my dough has pretty much come together and I'm just gonna start working it and kneading it. And I like to rotate 90 degrees, go and press. And we're going to keep doing this until the dough ball is nice and smooth on the outside. You know your dough is nice and done when it's smooth on the outside. And if you take your finger and just gently press, and it springs right back into place. At this point, we're going to take some plastic wrap, cover our dough up so it doesn't dry out, and we're going to let this rest for 30 minutes, and then we'll be back. The dough is nice and rested. It's ready to work with. So let's make some pappardelle and just cut this into four equal pieces. Save three, just cover in some plastic wrap. Just press it out a little bit so it's not too thick. Take a little bit of flour, not too much, you don't want to dry your pasta out, and apply a little bit to your rolling pin. And then a good trick to keeping the shape uniform, take your dough, rotate it 90 degrees, and then fold it across in thirds. And as you can see, the shape is a lot more uniform than it was before. And I'm just gonna continue rolling out my dough, rotating it 90 degrees, really trying to keep that shape nice and even. And you know your pasta is the ideal thinness if you can see your fingers underneath, it's a little bit translucent. Now it's time to cut our noodles. Fold the bottom half halfway up, top half down, and then fold each of those in half, like a little envelope of pasta. And the reason we're going with pappardelle is they're thick noodles, they're sturdy, and they're really gonna grab onto all that sauce. We don't wanna go too thick. I'm going maybe a half inch. If you grab it, it should unfold quite nicely. You got yourself some pasta. Toss with a little bit of flour just to prevent stickage. We'll grab a baking sheet and just pop those on there. I'm just going to repeat with our remaining dough and then it's time to bring the whole dish together. I've got a pot here with salted water at a boil to which we're going to add our pasta. And because this is fresh pasta, this only needs to cook for about one to two minutes until it's done. All right, so my ragu has been simmering for a few hours. I've got my short rib all shredded up and that's why we went with a ragu. It gives you more bang for your buck. It doesn't require as much meat, but still allows you to showcase that short rib. My pasta is floating at this point, which means we are good to go. Don't worry about draining off all the excess water. It's actually good for our sauce. These look so nice. They're like ribbons. I'm just gonna plate this together and then it's time to show Liz. Hopefully she likes it. Everything is nice and plated. It looks fantastic. I even went as far as to pour us some champagnes. So let's have Liz try it. Hi. How are you? Good. Oh my God, there's dessert. Yeah, what do you think? I mean, it looks very fancy. I prepared for us today a homemade short rib ragu with handmade pappardelle, and then we have a cannoli-inspired crepe cake. Do you want to give this a try? Yes. 
Let's do it. Let's dig in. Okay. Wow. This is very good. Can I keep eating or do I have to stop? <laughs> you, can keep, you can keep eating. So, are you ready to try dessert? Yes. <laughs> it's really good. I want to eat 10 of them. All right, Liz, so we have a short rib ragu and a crepe cake. How much do you think all of this cost altogether? $30? $35? This actually cost $12.30 to make. What? Yeah. How? That's the spirit of dollar dish. We get the best deals. So that means that you can make this like all the time. You shouldn't have told me how much it costs. <laughs> fine, fine, I can make it more. So can I eat the rest of this now? Absolutely. We're gonna finish our date night. Let us know what you think in the comments below or let us know what you're making a loved one this holiday. And until then, take care. Bye guys. Bye. Oh yes.